Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gomancing. The University of the Virgin Islands is poised to become a leader in renewable energy. In a signing ceremony held today at UVI's St. Thomas campus, the university showed that in spite of a budget of budget woes, a solid vision can turn big ideas into reality. News 2's April Knight was on site with details. This usually quiet hill at UVI was crackling with energy today when the university unveiled a solar energy plan that could spur the race for renewable energy in the territory. This three megawatt facility will be the largest of any historically black college or university in the nation and one of the largest of any university in the country. On these very grounds, the University of the Virgin Islands in St. Thomas will be laying down its two megawatt solar panel installation with a similar plan in St. Croix in hopes of achieving a visionary energy goal. It will allow us to reduce our reliance on fossil fuel consumption by at least 50 percent. UVI's decision to go solar is not just to follow a trend, it's fueled by financial crisis. A time of tremendous fiscal constraints. Our operating budget at the university has been reduced by $6 million in the last few years. UVI's twin dilemma of high power bills and flagging budget mirrors that of the VI community, a fact that gave an added push for UVI's global energy partners. People sometimes have to make a choice between buying food or medicine or paying their energy bills. This can really help the livelihoods and the economy of the Virgin Islands. Universities are ideal locations because they operate like small cities. They have residential settings, commercial settings. So by using universities as a model, you can then take that and scale that into larger systems. The movers and shakers present for the event seemed equally excited about what the solar project could mean to the community. It's a chance to prepare our students, developing our workforce. It's a better environment, greater health, and we also save lots of money. Construction is scheduled to begin in as early as 30 days. And by the end of this year, the budget-strapped university might not only save money, but serve as a beacon of energy efficiency for the rest of the territory. April Knight, News 2. Well, according to UVI, the installation of the 3 megawatt solar project is only the beginning and could lead to other green initiatives by university. Residents say the two public hearings held by senators last week to discuss the Hovenza agreement weren't enough. Local groups have been calling for more meetings. On Tuesday, former Senator Holland Redfield hosted a panel of stakeholders on his radio show, Straight Talk. To get more information out, News News' Erica Parsons has some highlights. Tuesday's panel on Holland Redfield's Straight Talk radio show all support ratifying the Hovenza Fourth Amendment agreement. St. Croix Environmental uh, does support the Senate ratification of the Fourth Amendment to the Hovensa Concession Agreement as a major step forward for the U.S. economy, the people of the Virgin Islands, and the environment of the, of the Virgin Islands. A vote against ratification of the Fourth Amendment Agreement with Hovensa is a vote against the St. Croix business community. VI Attorney General Vincent Fraser was at the negotiating table for the VI's team against co-owners Hovensa and Petroleos de Venezuela. He said it was tough to get them to a sales process. Getting them to agree to a sales process was one of the things, two things I think that, that caused meetings to break down. They did not want to sell the plant. As far as they were concerned, they would simply operate an oil terminal storage, uh, oil storage terminal. The business community in both districts say having the refinery up and running is the best option for the economy. There is no question that we have been hurt by the refinery's closure. We have to do all that we can to reverse that. We lost almost $600 million dollars in economic output on this island. The government lost approximately $100 million in direct taxes. We have to think ahead. We have to think of where we want to be. Do we want people to continue to live in cars? Do we want people to be hungry roaming the streets of St. Thomas and St. Croix? Do we want to have King Street and Strand Street empty? Experts told the VI government the South Shore, where the refinery sits, will never be the pristine land it used to be, so officials say it's more functional as a refinery. The AG and Planning and Natural Resources Commissioner both say selling Hovensa, however, doesn't let the owners out of their environmental obligations. You 
are required to deal with the liability of any infraction until such time that it reaches a point of regulatory compliance. And whether you are involved in a sale, whether you cease operations, that does not release you from the environmental obligations associated with any infraction. Erica Parsons, News 2. The St. Croix Economic Development Initiative will host a town hall Wednesday evening at UVI's Great Hall at 7 p.m. The business community, along with lawmakers, will be present to discuss the Hovenza Agreement. The public is invited. Meanwhile, the proposed amendment to the government's agreement with Hovenza has a number of groups pushing their objectives before the voting takes place. The 30th legislature has a little over a week to make the decision and residents living in the estate profit area whom are affected by Hovenza firsthand have a lot to say on the issue. While some are not in favor of the agreement, others show full support. Nisu Shiniko Robinson has the tales. With time running out, the senators are under the pressure of voting for or against the proposed amendment to the government's agreement with Hovenza. The community has been very vocal in their opinion on what's best for our islands, and the Sinkwa Chamber of Commerce supports this agreement, urging citizens to sign a petition and say yes to a new beginning for the Virgin Islands economy. The ratification of the Fourth Amendment agreement is also important because from a big picture ex perspective, we have to show the world that we are open for business on St. Croix. Our business community has severely struggled as a result of the Hovensa refinery closure. And a vote against ratification of the Fourth Amendment agreement is a vote against the St. Croix business community. Residents of the Prophet Hill Apartments do acknowledge that the return of Hovensa will boost the economy, but they feel as if it's unhealthy for their well-being. My opinion would be that it would not be necessary to have it back. Because right now we passed through a hard struggle with them, going through the situation of the gases and the contamination in the air. So our health is much better than the refinery. I don't think it should come back see, because of all this pollution we used to get here. Sometimes we, I used to see, we used to see the oil, the gas all over the barrel, all on the cover we have on it. Sometimes if it's on top of the roof, we get it in the cisterns. Sometimes even my husband's truck back there, he will, when he wake up, he will see all the oil on the truck. I think it is also not good for inside the body. See. With health being an issue for residents living near the refinery, the Chamber of Commerce is hopeful that with a new refinery comes new changes. When I hear about the health issues, I want to point out to people that with industry on the South Shore, we will be able to fund a cancer registry. We'll be able to fund a comprehensive health analysis. We will be able to better fund and keep open our hospitals. Shaniqua Robinson, News 2. The 30th legislature has until August 7th again to ratify or reject the agreement. The St. Croix Senators met Monday to discuss amendments they would like to see implemented. And the full Senate will be meeting Tuesday evening. Be sure to count on News 2 to keep you updated. Well, yesterday on, on Monday's newscast, we mentioned that the domestic violence detectives on St. Croix issued a wanted poster for a 57-year-old woman by the name of Betty Ann Young. And at about 9.30 p.m., Young turned herself into police custody. According to police, on July 9th, Young called her former boyfriend to fix her vehicle, which he did. But while she was driving the victim home, an argument ensued and Young stabbed him in the back with a fluorescent light bulb. Police are investigating two robberies. On July 26, police were dispatched to investigate a robbery. The initial police report stated that two suspects were outside the Golden Rock Pharmacy while a female was shopping inside. As she exited the store, the suspects threw her to the ground, took something from her, and fled the area on foot. The female was uncooperative with police, according to officers, and gave no information. However, witnesses said one suspect was Hispanic male with locks, slim with a light complexion. The second male suspect had a dark complexion and slim build. Also on July 28th at 5.15 p.m., a robbery was reported in a state yellow cedar. VIPD spokesperson Melody Rames has the tales. The initial police report stated that a man was cutting grass with a weed whacker when he was approached by two males with white t-shirts over their faces and dressed in black. One suspect 
pointed a handgun at the victim, and the second suspect searched his pockets and removed a roll of weed whacker string. The suspects then threatened to injure the victim and then fled the area on foot. No one was injured. These cases have been turned over to the Criminal Investigation Bureau for further investigation. And anyone with any information on these robberies or any other robberies are asked to call detectives at 712-6077, 712-6037-911 or Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. After their first face-to-face -face meetings in three years, Israeli and Palestinian negotiators are ready to launch formal peace talks. They've given themselves a timeline and agreed to tackle the tough issues that have derailed all their previous attempts at a peace agreement. Danielle Nottingham reports from the State Department. Secretary of State John Kerry and Israeli and Palestinian negotiators emerged from two days of talks with a shared goal, a peace deal in nine months. A viable two-state solution is the only way this conflict can end, and there is not much time to achieve it, and there is no other alternative. The league negotiators started their day at the White House, where President Obama expressed his support for this effort to end the long-standing conflict. The past 48 hours have laid the groundwork for future talks, with all sides agreeing all issues are on the table, from security to borders to the control of Jerusalem. It's not our intention to argue about the past, but to create solutions and make decisions for the future. Both sides will meet again in the next two weeks to launch formal negotiations. Secretary Kerry says he will be the only source on how they are progressing, and he doesn't plan on talking. James Ogby, president of the Arab American Institute, says this won't be easy. It's, it's going to be tough to come up with the formula, but it's going to be equally tough to earn the trust and get the support of, of voters on both sides. In Gaza, Hamas protesters rallied against the talks. And in the West Bank, Jewish settlers say they are not interested in moving. Danielle Nottingham, News 2. And keeping our eye on the economy, on the employment rates rose in 90% of all large U.S. cities in June. The Labor Department says jobless rates climbed as college graduates began searching for work. Detroit, which has filed for bankruptcy, had the highest unemployment rate at 10.3 percent. President Barack Obama is offering a simpler corporate tax code in exchange for more spending programs to create jobs for the middle class. But Republicans are saying no deal. They say the corporate and individual tax codes must be changed at the same time to help small business owners. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank Stock Market Watch. The Dow down one, Nasdaq and S&P up. Coming up, a news to DJ and musical director for Akon, Benny Dimas, stopped by to talk about the premiere of the independent production called Island Song. And that's going to be at Caribbean Cinemas, and you are invited. We'll be right back. Around 11.05 a.m. this morning, a 32-foot vessel caught on fire at the Christian said boardwalk near the King's Alley. An explosion was heard and black smoke could be seen. According to the VI Fire Service Chief, Angel Torres, firefighters were able to extinguish the boat fire within minutes of arriving on the scene and fiberglass fumes were dissipating. According to reports, one individual is receiving treatment for burns. No other injuries have been reported. Streets in the downtown Christiansted area remained open to pedestrian and vehicular traffic. A Juan Louis Hospital official was fired Monday. Juan F. Louis Vice President of Facilities Management Peter Abrahams was terminated. He told the Daily News in a phone interview that Louis officials said they were cutting out the position and that was it. News who contacted the interim CEO, Dr. Kendall Griffith's office, and was told he is on leave until August 7th, and there's no statement from his office. Griffith told the Daily News Monday that the decision to let Abrahams go was purely financial. He told them that it is clear we have to make reductions, starting with the executive team. The VI Waste Management Authority is celebrating a win. The agency, along with its contractor, Sanitas Partners, received national recognition for the St. Croix transfer station that opened in May 2012. The transfer station won the 2013 Bronze Excellence Award. 
That's from the Solid Waste Association of North America, or SWANA. SWANA recognizes outstanding solid waste programs and facilities that advance the practice of environmentally and economically sound solid waste management. Waste Management Executive Director May Adams Cornwall said she is extremely proud of the accomplishments. Well, recipients were announced for the Albert A. Sheen and Innovative UVI Scholarships, Virgin Island Scholars, Lucas Berry and Vico McMillan of St. Thomas and St. Croix, respectively, were selected as the 2013 Albert A. Sheen Scholars. Berry is an 18-year-old honor student at the Antilles School. McMillan is a 17-year-old honors graduate from the St. Croix Educational Complex. These outstanding individuals were chosen from a total of 102 applicants. Both recipients of the Albert A. Sheen Scholarship will receive $10,000 worth of tuition money. Congratulations. Well, have you heard about the film Island Song that was filmed on St. Croix? Well, you can have the opportunity to see local actors on the big screen as well as a familiar face on the music scene. We know him as Virgin Islander Benny Dimas, who works as the musical director for popular artist Akon since 2003. Benny stopped by to tell us about the premiere of the independent production. Last year, a friend of mine named Isan he called me up and he told me about his friend, David Massey, the director and producer. Mm -hmm. He's doing a movie. And Isan mentioned me and told him, you need to go on YouTube and see my friend. His name is Benny Demas and he has a webisode series called Easy. So David goes, on line, goes online, checks Easy, and he's like, whoa you know this guy? <laughs> like, you can get me to this guy. And Isan is like, yeah, I can call him right now and, you know, we can try him out. He said, man, put, this, put me on the phone with this guy. So he calls me and he tells me I'm about to email you a piece of a script for my film. By the second read, he was like, oh, no, stop. You got it. You got it. Done deal. So here we are. So tell us about the film, um I understand that uh, we have a lot of local <coughs> actors in it as well. Yes, yes. How did it uh, translate to coming back to the Virgin Islands? Well, you know, David, he, he's worked here in the Virgin Islands before. He's been here before. Mm -hmm. He's lived here for a long time um, doing radio and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, him wanting to do a film in the Virgin Islands was something that he's always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so him living in L.A., he just thought, okay, we're going to put half of the movie in L.A., put the other half here in the islands. And I think David is just like me. Uh, my mind frame just keeps telling me all the time that I want to share what I've been able to accomplish with my Virgin Islands people. My character, I should say, is uh, almost like a renegade. Mm -hmm. He's removed himself from society, from the norm, and his idea of he, he's taking on his own form of justice now. You know, he doesn't like dirty politicians, he doesn't like drug dealers or anybody who's into destroying our beautiful island. So for him, he's more um, taking matters into his own hands. Mm -hmm. He hired local actors, he hired local production people, and you know, it turned out to be a beautiful thing. And of course, it was much more incentive knowing that once I read for him, he found out that I'm from St. Thomas also. I think that was a really cool thing for him to want to cast someone from the Virgin Islands. And when you hear uh, Mr. George Silcott is in it, and George, he speaks the raw Virgin Islands dialect. So when you hear that, I'm pretty sure the audience will be definitely pleased. Well, we are excited because <laughs> you, we get to see a lot of familiar faces and yes. places and accents. And you, we were talking about the same thing that not too often we can see this on the big screen. And mm -hmm. so it's going to be premiered here. Yeah, he's right here in St. Thomas, uh, Wednesday at mm -hmm. 6 p.m. So, you know, for anybody who's coming out, you know, we're going to have our VIP people who's going to enter first. And after that, it's first come, first serve. So I hope everybody can get there by 5.30 and line it up, you know, and make sure you're there. And a local actor and radio personality, George Silka, is among one of the actors. Now, the film shows many sides of the island of St. Croix, aerial and underwater. It also features a lot of local music. 
David Massey, the film director and co-producer, lived on St. Croix and St. Thomas for nine years and worked as a DJ at two local radio stations in the 1980s. Now, the premiere again is on Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Caribbean Cinemas. The screening is free. Well, stick around. Your News to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.